the adrenal, if you learn nothing else today, especially if you are not yet menopausal, I want you to understand this. If you, as Michelle said, if you go into menopause with strong adrenals, they produce enough estrogen to keep everything else running except your fertility. And that is like the adrenals are the foundation of your hormonal system. And it's way easier in my experience, because I've worked with a lot of hormone patients now, to heal and strengthen and build that organ reserve of the adrenals before menopause. After menopause, honestly, I found that sometimes herbs can help a little, but especially with things like sex drive, you can do like topical estrogen that helps with like vaginal um, pain and tissue but things like sex drive and energy, it's really hard to build that up post menopausally if your adrenals are already fried. So get them as young as you can. And, and unfortunately, I'm starting to see like 24 year olds with adrenal fatigue. Because if you think about how our girls are kind of brought up now, it's like straight a student and getting the best school and get a high level attorney job or something. You know, by the time they've just even done that, they're 24 and infertile because their adrenals are crashed. So starting young, nutrient density, prioritizing self-care and self-love, prioritizing rest. So after menopause, the adrenals become the primary hormone factory to produce androstenedione, which is then converted to estrone and estradiol in the body fat, which is great postmenopausally if your adrenals are strong. So I'm going to kind of go over this really quickly because I think it's important. Stress is so essential to understand because, so here's your brain. In the brain, you're, just your thoughts alone can trigger this entire cascade of stress response. It's initiated by the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal. So the hypothalamus releases a hormone, the pituitary releases a hormone, then the adrenals respond to that stress. Ideally, they buffer it with cortisol, rarely, only when you're really, really stressed, like being chased by a tiger. You know, the system was designed to go off like 10 times a year, not like every time your cell phone beeps. <laughs> <laughs> 18 times a day. So occasionally, release cortisol for protection for you. Is if the adrenal glands get really tired and they no longer can secrete very much cortisol at all, sometimes you get a secretion of epinephrine and norepinephrine. So any little stressor, like your three-year-old trips, you know, like, <gasps> that's like you're starting to push your adrenals because you're like overreacting to minor stressors. So this, and then this influences the immune response because cortisol causes leaky gut and influences, in, increases the likelihood that your immune system is gonna overreact. If your microbiome is not in good shape, that's gonna be even worse if you have tons of you know, if you have chronic yeast infections or it's much more bad bacteria than good bacteria in there. Because these bacteria and the immune response release what's called cytokines, which are inflammatory factors. So it's like this vicious cycle. The stress causes inflammation that causes stress, causes inflammation. And the stress itself triggers the stress response in the brain. And the inflammation in the brain triggers things like anxiety and depression. So the number one thing to do is to calm this overactive stress response and calm this hyperactive immune response by being calm, mm -hmm. setting up your environment to be supportive and calming, accepting and receiving help taking good care of yourself. So eating healthy food is just a, almost a very small piece of that puzzle. Even if you were eating like Big Macs all the time, but you were like always joyously happy and calm and didn't feel stressed, probably the Big Macs wouldn't do you much harm. It's not ideal, because that's a physical stressor, but if you were only physically stressed, 
see how that's just one little bit. All right, because this whole thing, you, you know, feeds itself. All right, so like I said, ideally you want to preserve your adrenal response in pre-menopause, but if you didn't do that, um, here's a couple of choices. Some herbs are helpful, the adaptogenic herbs, which I'll go over in a moment, bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, which you can use herbs and either of this with a functional medicine doctor, a clinical nutritionist, or a naturopath. My best success has been with the adaptogen rhodiola because it, it's fine if the cortisol is up or down. Um, ashwagandha and uh, rolora, it depends. You know, you have to really measure the cortisol before you use it. Or I, I also refer a lot, even though I can do herbs, a lot of times I refer to a Chinese medicine doctor for very individualized herbs. I do that myself and I think it, it's helpful because the adaptogens are a little bit of a, you know, cannon, not a silver bullet. Um, and nutrition and lifestyle interventions will improve the effectiveness of all of these therapies and help you to get more and more down to the root cause. So it still goes back to the most important thing is nutrition and exercise and being calm. So we want to get off the stress sugar roller coaster. Lots of rest, sleep, joy, and laughter. This is, oh, a strategy that, okay, this is where we start a lot of times. So I call this the laptop curfew. A lot of women are staying up to like one in the morning, like literally, like doing their laundry and getting ready for the next day. And, and, and they're checking their email at night or being on Facebook at night. At 8 p.m. for my clients is a laptop curfew because two hours before bed, you should stop looking at blue light of any kind, whether it's TV, laptop, phone, iPad, Kindle, stuff like that. Because the problem is, is that suppresses melatonin, which makes it hard for you to sleep. Perimenopause is when everything is going a little bit like this, okay? And then you get to menopause and things even out. Okay? So if you need a bridge or a boat to get to the other side of the turbulent years in the short term, I mean, you take what you need in the lowest dose that you need in the shortest amount of time that you need it, and you address all the lifestyle choices too. I just think knowledge is power. So yes, I'm going to talk about some of the pros, I'm going to talk about some of the cons, so that you have the knowledge and you make an empowered decision. Okay? So. We looked at the benefits here of estrogen hormone therapy, some of the risks, and again, these are similar, possibly less with bioidentical than synthetic, but still real, okay? There's an increased risk of breast cancer, ovarian cancer, because remember we talked about how estrogen is a growth hormone. It builds things up, okay? An increased risk of pancreatitis and gallstones, blood clots and stroke. Individualized bioidentical hormone therapy is probably regarded as the gold standard. Okay, so the hormones are prescribed based on test results, looking at your levels. It's usually a combination of estrogen, progesterone, and androgen, so either DHEA or testosterone. It can be taken orally, transvaginally, okay, or transdermally. The thinking is that it's best to do it transdermally onto the skin because it gets directly into the system there. If you're taking it orally, it has to be processed by the liver and some of the, chemical, the biochemical makeup of the hormones that you're taking could be changed. So a topical application is regarded as optimal, okay? So, we've talked about this. Bioidentical hormones can't be patented. Synthetics can, follow the money, okay? The delivery system of bioidenticals can be patented, so patches, rings, things like that. And then your comfort level. So knowing what you know about your lifestyle, about your genetic risk profile for things like breast cancer or heart disease or osteoporosis, about your comfort level, about where you are now. Do you need something to just break the cycle and get you back in a more even keel again? You know, what's your comfort level with hormone therapy? Lots of people, it's a godsend. Lots of people don't need it. Some people take it for a short amount of time. That's what they need. It just kind of gives the system a break, resets the whole cortisol adrenal roller coaster, and then they're able to taper off it and get on with things. Don't judge. 
it's really, really important that everybody, you have no idea what another person's lifestyles, what their choices are, what's going on with them, what were their 20s and 30s like, you know, what's their adrenal reserve like, okay? So, not, oh, you're on synthetic, oh, you're on Premer, and oh, you don't want to be doing that. That is not our scope of practice, okay? We want to educate and empower them to make good lifestyle choices. We are certainly not judging anybody, okay? It's really, really important, okay? I talked a little bit earlier about wild yam cream that you can buy in health food shops. Honestly, save your money um, because it doesn't have active bioidentical progesterone in it. So who should use hormonal therapy? If you're suffering with severe hot flashes, night sweats, dryness, cognitive mood changes, if you've got a very high risk of fracture, because again, postmenopausally, there's a very sharp drop off in bone density and bone quality actually, I should say, and I'll talk about that tomorrow, the difference between bone density and bone quality, and then it levels out. Okay? If you've got a lot of bone quality in your bone bank going into perimenopause, you can make those withdrawals quite comfortably. If you're not going in with a good peak bone mass, okay, and your lifestyle doesn't feed into healthy bone strategies, then you could be in trouble and at risk of fracture. If you've got severe endometriosis, give me one second then I will, and this for me is the most important thing. If your quality of life is affected, if you are not enjoying your life, then do hormones. Okay, try it and see. See if it's good for you. And um, I was going to say, uh, when you say high risk of fracture, is that something that you'd be looking to test or you just look at history, family history? Usually osteoporosis is a diagnosis uh, of retrospection um, after somebody fractures. So we'll talk tomorrow about some of the risk factors that predispose people to developing osteoporosis and bone quality issues. Um, there's a whole campaign surrounding that now that we're, we're going to be more pro preemptive and that's it's being driven by the NHS, which I think is a good thing. But I don't want to see everybody being put in bisphosphonates or Fosamax either, in the same way they've, they've tried to push the stats. So we'll talk about that tomorrow. And if I don't answer your question tomorrow, bring it up again. Yeah. Okay, so estrogen therapy is suitable for people who've had uh, oophorectomy and hysterectomy. They've got no ovaries and no uterus. Uh, a short course of a topical cream up to 12 weeks to designated tissues. For example, your pelvic floor, if you want to increase the blood supply, if you want to fluff up the tissues down there, get a little bit more lubrication, uh, improve continence. If the, the clitoris is not doing its job as well, if we just need some healthier vulvovaginal tissues, Using a topical hormone therapy cream can be great. I have a question. Do they have a speed up I think it's a different brand name, but something like that. Yeah. A few more and more clients are on a speed out, which is a little gold. Yeah. Or mm -hmm. mm -hmm. estrogen. So it's basically a drug, but it functions only after the vulvar tissue, vaginal mm -hmm. tissue. And, you know, so far I've seen it be I mean, topical estrus for a short amount of time can really change things a lot down there, you know, yeah. or, you know, e strings, things like that. But use what you need for as long as you need it. Look at everything else that you can do as well, and then, you know, taper off. Okay? So, again, we want to give you a little kickstart, give your body, but your body has a huge capacity to regulate <coughs> itself as well. Okay? So again, using the lowest dosage that you need for the shortest amount of time, but being kind to yourself and listening to yourself as well, and knowing that if you need it, do it. Absolutely do it. Maria, uh, Maria earlier will pop in to, uh, tomorrow, and she uses those topical oestrogens um, mm -hmm. for uh, the pelvic floor and the vulval area, so maybe we could ask her just to speak about that. Yeah, absolutely. I have seen women's lives be transformed. They go from not being able to have sex because it's so painful, no libido, no lubrication. They get their mojo back again, okay? And then they can try using things like coconut oil, you know, fabulous. And now, again, just be careful you're talking to them by using coconut oil and <laughs> olive oil and things like that down there as well. They are not consistent with using condoms, okay? They are not latex friendly options. HIV AIDS is growing the highest in the 50 plus women category, okay? So a lot of women get to menopause, they're shaking things up, okay? They're getting their, 
and getting their mojo back, okay? And they're going and they're doing maybe a little bit more experimenting. Okay? Just be safe, is all I will say. Okay, so just be aware that the oil-based lubricants are not uh, are not happy bed fellows with condoms. Okay? So again, this is from 2012, a uh, special edition of the Women's Health Initiative and HRT. So there are some modest benefits to hormone replacement therapy, but it's used to be limited to specific patient populations. Okay? Estrogen with progestin and estrogen alone decrease the risk of fractures, but increase the risk of stroke, thromboembolic events, gallbladder disease, and urinary incontinence. Estrogen plus progestin increases the risk of breast cancer and probable dementia. So go in with your eyes open. Okay? So the factors to consider are your bone loss rate, are you at risk for fracture? You know, what's the new bone that you're producing like is a good quality bone, okay? What's your fracture resistance like? What's your cardiovascular disease risk like? And what are your cholesterol levels? Okay. Also then, bearing in mind histories or potential tendencies towards things like endometrial cancer and breast cancer, Bearing in mind that hormone therapy will make your breasts denser and a little harder to read on nanograms. Will certainly deal very effectively with things like night sweats and hot flashes. Will help with vaginal dryness, not the only game in town, okay there are other lubricants out there. Will help fluff up the vulvovaginal tissues, will help with memory and cognition. But so will a number of other things as well. <laughs>